Hello and welcome, you're watching Head to Head. I'm Carrie Oderman with UATV. The ninth convocation of the Ukrainian parliament began its work on August 29th. Following July's snap election, 424 lawmakers took their seats and swore an oath of allegiance to Ukraine. The Verkhovna Rada has already formed the deputy factions. The biggest one, the Servant of the People, has the majority and formed a mono-coalition. So what's to expect from the new Rada? To discuss this and more, we welcome to our studio Victor Liek, President of East Europe Foundation. Hello, and thank Hello. you for being here. Hello, Kerry. Let's begin with what your organization does. Parliament, um, the session just began, and you had a few classes for the new parliamentarians. Sure. Uh, East Europe Foundation, as part of USAID-funded RADA program, uh, had several sessions for newly elected MPs uh, on different kind of uh, lawmaking uh, issues, as well as on rules and procedures and how team and MP should work. As in this parliament, we will have about 80% of newly elected MPs. Uh, most of uh, these MPs, they are quite young. Comparing to previous convocation, I would say that the average, uh, in average, um, MP, uh, an MP in this convocation represents uh, small and medium business. Uh, and this is a young person until uh, up to 40 years old, which is very, very new for Ukraine. And with these new parliamentarians mm -hmm. and this new generation of politicians that are coming, mm -hmm. what did your organization tell them in these mm -hmm. classes? Uh, our first try uh, was with Kiev School of Economics, and that was very intensive five-day training. Uh, session for Sluga Naroda, where uh, East Europe Foundation was USA Trader program. We took one day to train um, MPs on how, what is the process of lawmaking, how to differentiate politics versus uh, policy, how to conduct dialogue with stakeholders, how to take into consideration uh, their opinion, how to. Uh, invite and how to uh, uh, attract citizens to reviewing the uh, lawmaking process, etc. Uh, as a special, um, a special issue, we presented the way how practically they can put together uh, a draft law, what's the process of uh, revision by different kind of committees. Uh, uh, we have several mandatory organizations to have consultations with. So we presented, during the whole day, we presented the whole process of the, of the lawmaking. And we were quite surprised by openness of uh, our trainees, I would say, uh, where they demonstrated a high level of uh, openness and motivation to do, uh, to work actively in the parliament, um, as well as we received a number of very clever and smart questions. Now, there's a lot to learn. Is there yeah. an advantage or a disadvantage to having parliamentarians this new and young? What would you say? Uh, we will see. Um, we understand that parliamentarians need to be trained and we consider this as a continuous process. We further, after the training with Slugana Roda, we conducted a number of several uh, training sessions for uh, MPs of single mandate districts, as well as uh, for Golas, for example, where we presented the same uh, issues, but more in more detailed way. Uh, probably uh, asking the question how they will be efficient without previous experience. Uh, I think that technical issues will be they. They, they could be taught with technical issues, but I think that's very important they have a motivation and they have an openness to uh, produce laws uh, which country needs and to involve and be open as much as possible. I think this is a key point. And again, the role of civil society is extremely important to take a look, to guide them and to, uh, to be a watchdog in case they are violating uh, certain kind of red lines. Uh, as well as violating uh, conflict of interests. Well, not everything will be new in the new session. There are some topics that uh, 
you've addressed and especially making politics more access to citizens through digitalization. What can you tell us about that? That was uh, majorly um, a key point of discussion with each of the fraction, with each of the group we taught. First of all, I need to say that uh, level of openness of Ukrainian MPs will be extremely high. Almost every word said in uh, uh, parliament uh, in the whole in Verkhovna Rada will be noted and will be available for further analysis. Every day uh, move uh, as a MP will be carefully considered by uh, civil society organizations. Um, a uh, website of Verkhovna Rada produces a lot of data sets for uh, open data data sets. So it means that uh, we do not need, citizens don't need to have a special permission to get data about uh, MPs, fraction, political fraction, political force, etc. They can simply take it from, uh, from a computer and to uh, either analyze or visualize and to present for their own purposes. So it means that uh, we have enormous openness in terms of information, access to information about what MP, MP uh, do. But at the same time, we would like to have more interaction with MPs. And that's why we work on introducing a number of uh, e-engagement uh, instruments, so people can send their uh, opinion, ask them electronically, ask MPs electronically, access them and have uh, feedback. One of those tools which is quite innovative for Ukraine is uh, public uh, commenting uh, feature for draft laws. Every citizen, after proper registration on the website of Verkhovna Rada, can comment several draft laws, uh, either line by line or as a document as a whole, or suggest their own kind of formulation of text of one or another line. Uh, uh, not, um, not so many parliaments can say that they have this feature. And I think this open ups, uh, opens up uh, the process of lawmaking. We also would like to have a more interaction with citizens on local level, where they can easily find MP understand what the mandate of he or she uh, can do for citizens, as well as uh, to uh, address their uh, concerns, issues very openly in the most um, effective way. There's been some criticism in the past that there's quite a divide between people at the local level and what happens in Kyiv. Um, what can be done to make people in the villages and smaller towns um, have more access to the services that are meant for them? First of all, uh, they just need to be uh, interested to uh, address some issues to their MPs and understand what is the mandate of MP of Verkhovna Rada. Because we have several other level of um, city councils and oblast council, they can address uh, other issues. But anyway, uh, uh, this is a very good question, uh, as control function of Virhovna Rada usually takes about 5% of energy of uh, MPs, and mostly they are concentrated on a uh, very draft-making uh, uh, function. But at the same time, we train MPs how to work with their constituencies, how to address issues uh, citizens raise to them, how they can bring them uh, these issues to Verkhovna Rada. Uh, that's why we train and we plan, we are training and we plan to train for, for the training for uh, ADs of uh, MP. As, again, uh, MP... AD meaning? AD meaning assistance, assistance. Uh, and this permission general no deputato, assistant of Verkhovna Rada MPs, uh, they will be working as a team, uh, providing more consultations with constituencies, working with constituencies. One of the topic we would like to uh, MPs to actively use in their work with constituencies, uh, this combination of offline and online um, methods and tools, for example, public hearings, public reportings, town hall meetings, uh, working with local media, etc. Independent Ukraine isn't very old. Has there been a political culture that's been developed in terms of town halls and reaching out to your MPs? Is that something that Ukrainians mm -hmm. do? Uh, yes, probably not very often as we would like, but at the moment, uh, on previous convocation, we selected so-called seven model MPs, and we presented and we trained them with a number of um, 
these kind of tools. We train their teams, they train themselves, mm -hmm. and we've been surprised by their level of active involvement of citizens in this process. We conducted a number of town hall meetings, public hearings, hackathons, different kind of public discussion with MPs where people can address freely uh, their issues and they structure these issues. They found uh, several uh, options for solving one or another problem. And then they kind of did a follow up actions. And afterwards, we conducted a public presentation in the parliament where people from their constituencies, MPs constituency, came in TED uh, format. So they presented back to the, uh, their constituency their issue, how they took this, how the story, how they took one particular issue and brought to the parliament. Well, the East Europe Foundation is certainly providing the new parliamentarians with best practices. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have today. That was Victor Lach, president of the East Europe Foundation, with insights on how the new parliament can make sure the public interest comes first. Thank you for watching UATV and stay tuned for the rest. Yeah.